Hey everybody, so in the last one we were talking about the assets page and the sort of things we can trade on eToro. But what if you're like me and you come to eToro not really wanting to learn how to trade at all? I wanted a system which could passively make me income. I wanted to find a way to benefit off other people's experience so I could just get on with my life but I could still be involved in the markets. Over here we've got the copy trader part. This is on the discover page as well. Up here we were looking at all the different assets. Down here we can see the copy trader part. We can click view all and then we have this screen. Now, what are we looking at here? Copy trading is a way to basically let other people trade for us. We can browse through all these profiles on the site. We can look at their statistics. How much have they made this year? How many years of trading experience can we actually see? We can look at their risk profiles. We can look at all sorts of things about them. How many people are copying them? It's all nice and clean and sort of presented in a simple way. If we like the look of one of these people, we can just copy them with a certain amount of our money. We don't have to copy them with all of our money. We can copy, I think, up to 100 different people at any time with different amounts of money and then they're automatically using our money in their future trades. Now, if those people make our profits, they reuse those profits they make in future trades. I'll talk about that later, how the copy trading system actually works. First, I want to show how we can sort through them because there's an awful lot of them. Now, when I first came to the site, it's not like I didn't know how to trade and that's it. I didn't even know how to sort through all of these people. How do I pick the right person to trade? I see lots of numbers, 1.42, 6.71. I see numbers all over the place and I really wasn't sure how to get started with it. So eToro really just shows us, first of all, the most copied people, the wisdom of the crowd. Who do other people think is good? That's what we do in life, don't we? we say, who's popular? Which mechanic has lots of recommendations? And we go to that one. They've done the same thing here with traders. The first one is the most copied and we can click on view all and it gives us an even bigger look of even more people who are the most copied. Look, we can see their numbers of copies there. He's got 22,000 copies, Yep, Yep, Bond. 15,688 for CPH equities, 10,559. You'll notice that the numbers sort of drop down pretty precipitously, you see. So really most people are copying the most popular people. People go where other people have gone. Now that can be a bonus. It's easy to see who's good, but it can also be misleading at times. It's always good to be able to analyze them ourselves, I think. So the next one that they show on that page is trending. Who are the people who are currently picking up lots of new followers? Similar sort of thing. Long-term stock investors. Obviously, most of us have heard of stocks and we think long-term sounds safer. So long-term stock investors, again, there's the view all button if we want it. Then long-short investors, bit more technical and multi-strategy investors. These are just ways to get started. If we don't have any idea who to look for, they've given us some simple categories. Now, how do we know that we can trust these popular investors? How do we know who they are? All right, the thing is, there's a load of people on here. Some of them are brand new. Anyone can join the popular investor program. I'm gonna join the popular investor program. Maybe you will. Some of us have like, you know, a year's experience anything to do with the markets. Other people have 15 years in banking and they're becoming popular investors. It's democratized, it's made it available for everyone. But you know, the more we know, the more we can identify who's possibly good or bad. Now it might be that a new person is actually gonna turn out to be a really good trader. Then we learn how to put stop losses, our copy stop losses in place in case they're not. If they do turn out to be good, then we can invest more with them. eToro's done a lot since I joined the site to sort of make sure that people who are popular investors have a little more financial education. There's courses that popular investors kind of now have to take as we move up the tiers. There are different tiers on the popular investor program. And as we get more and more up the tiers and we get better and better benefits from being a popular investor, eToro also wants us to have taken certain courses now. Obviously, we have to keep our risk scores low. We have to communicate a certain amount with the people who are copying us. eToro obviously doesn't want to be seen as stupid or just, you know, letting anyone be a popular investor. That'd be bad for business. So eToro has gone a long way to try and put these sort of regulations on people who are PIs, but also they've wanted to keep it open to everyone to have a go at being a popular investor. Now this has good parts and bad parts, you know, it means that everyone can have a go, you can have a go and I can have a go. And we're mixed in with these kind of people who have a lot of experience, which is, is good, it can also be risky. There's a lot of ways we can approach this, which sort of make it a little bit safer. So up here, we've got these different sort of menu items we can look from. And here, look, it's listing all of these sort of different countries in the world. But if I just sort of pick one of these, let's pick Cameroon, all right? So now we're looking for a Cameroon investor for, who invests in any market and has made at least 10% in the last 12 months, all right? So let's click go and, up oh, too refined. Try to remove a few filter restrictions or simply start fresh by clicking here. So eToro doesn't have an investor for every single profile we may be looking for. 
We might not find an investor from Kazakhstan who trades commodities and has made 30% in the last two years. And do you know what I mean? So we'll have to do some searching and start to find people who are similar to what we're looking for, if not identical. But it does have a lot of people. There are a lot of investors on eToro. It's just that most people, like me, we're, we're a bit lazy. And if we see someone who's already got a thousand copiers, we're more likely to go, all right, well, I'm just going to try with this dude or this woman, you know, because they seem good. They've already got a thousand people. And then that way, it tends to be that the most popular people just keep gaining more and more people. You'll see that, but we can dig and we can find people. So here we can choose where they're from. Here we can choose what assets we're looking for. Now, we're probably gonna, not going to know which assets we really want to invest in until we've had a little bit more experience, unless you start off and you've already got a background in finance. So this one is maybe going to be a bit more useful later on when we're looking to diversify our portfolio and find investors who are maybe investing in specific different assets because we don't have any exposure to that yet. Maybe that'll come a little later on. Useful to have though. Then how much do we want them to have gained? We can put, you know, 10% or 20% and we've got a time frame over here. Now, if I click go, it'll return results. So these are really useful as well. Here we can see the return, low zero to 10%, medium 10 to 50%, high over 50%, which is incredibly high. Generally, if someone's making over 50%, they're taking enormous risks, unless they're extremely lucky. We'll get to all of this later on, but you can also set it. You can say, you know, from 5% to, uh, I don't know, 30%, you know, and we can sort of apply that and look for people. There we are, return 5 to 30%. We can try uh, their risk scores. We can find, you know, do we want a low risk score, 0 to 2%? Maybe they'll make you very little profit. The profit and the risk often, not always, but often go together. So if you want a low risk score, don't expect the big profits. If you want a medium risk score, expect medium profits. High over six risk score, you know, expect to be able to possibly lose all your money as well. Do you know what I mean? Or make a lot of money. So risk and reward often go together. We often want very low risk and very high reward. Everyone wants that. If it was possible, we'd all just be copying that, that trader, you know, straight away. But um, they go together. Risk and reward often go together. So what else have we got? We've got copy assets under management. How much is this trader controlling of everyone else's money? If you've got all the people who are copying the trader and you put all the money they're copying that trader with together, how much is that money? It's a sort of a bit of a sign of how much people are trusting them really at the moment. So we can choose less than 50K, 50K to 100K, 100K to 300K, 300K to 1 million. There's people with 5 million plus. Look, let's press apply and see how it narrows down. Look, so the top tier, top level investors, look how many copiers they've got and you see how many disappeared. Most people are copying the, the sort of most copied people, you know. Then over here, we've got trading allocation. What sort of assets are they currently actually trading in? Active weeks, how active is this person? And then we've got advanced, which shows us the different parameters we've actually put in um, so far, everything. And we can reset them over here and sort of start again. So it's quite a lot to take in really in the beginning. I know it is, you know, when you look at these sort of things, how do we know which market to invest in? How do I know? I, I'm obviously going to put 90% there. How much do I want them to have made in the last 12 months? 90%. But as time goes on, you start to realize that people, you know, you have to get realistic. You have to work out what's normal, what's weird. When you see, you know, 90% in six months, does that ring alarm bells and why? All of this stuff I get used to over time. This is all over time. What I normally do is I'll find them here. I'll look for people, commodities traders or Forex traders or, you know, crypto traders. And then I'll add them to a watch list because I'm never that sure that I've made the right choice. And then I'll like leave them. And over like a few weeks or whatever, I'll just go back to that watch list, have a look at it and see how they're doing. Like, was I right here? I also get recommendations to the channel. I'm lucky because I have a channel. People sort of send in recommendations. Sometimes I'll see people in the feed, you know, I'll sort of see people talking I'll think oh that makes sense but there's also a lot of spam in this feed a lot of people just promoting themselves so you still have to kind of dig into it end up digging into it I think when we start trading manually it's really clear to us right it's my money right I'm gonna have to learn what these assets are I'm gonna have to learn about the market sometimes we don't and we just end up blindly gambling and most of us lose money most retail investors when we start trying to trade we lose money statistically um, so it's really good. I think the more we can learn, obviously, the better. Now, that seems true when we're trading our own assets. 
Um, copying people is a much more passive play. We're putting our money with someone else, we're copying them and they're making all the decisions. But at the same time, it's just nice to know about the markets. So we still have a feeling of control. We get the best of both worlds. We're passive, so they're doing the work. I'm off riding my bike or walking the dog or getting on with my business or raising my family or doing whatever I do. I'm doing that. But when I do come and look at the people who I'm copying, it's nice that I know what they're doing. What's this trader style? What's that trader style? I can sort of see if they're off target or off track and I can maybe manage my sort of stable of traders, you know? I can see what they're doing and maybe switch one out if I want a new one. I, I can diversify my assets. This is my um, equities trader. This is my Forex trader. I want some exposure to commodities so I know how to find a commodities trader. So starting to learn about the markets, even though we're just copying people, really gives me the ability to have that feeling of control, um, and a little bit of safety as well, you know? Now, if we do copy one of these people and suddenly realize we've copied the wrong person, it's not that bad, to be honest. There's some slight spread fees which we might have to pay, but there's no fee to start copying someone. There's no fee to stop copying someone. We can switch between different people copy. We can copy someone, then uncopy them, then copy them, then uncopy them. And we won't actually have a fee to actually copy them, to start and stop that copy. They've made it quite user-friendly and simple for beginners. The people we're copying, they don't make money off us as copiers. They make money off eToro. eToro pays them. The more people who copy them, the more eToro pays them. Now I'll go over all aspects of how we actually copy someone. Um, how do we add money to them? How do we start the copy? How do we stop the copy? All sorts of things. How do we set our risk score and control our risk so they can't lose us too much money? There are automatic stop losses we can put in place so that even if they do lose a certain amount of money and we're off doing something outside, it will automatically stop it for us and save the rest of our money. So next time what we'll do is we'll just copy someone and then I'll show you just how simple that can be to sort of change things around whilst we're copying them. All right, please like and subscribe uh, and share the video. Helps a lot if you like it actually. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, hope you're well.